Yo guys, what's going on? It's Lewis here and it's time for another market update. So in these market updates, I basically scan through the markets and give my uh, opinion on what I think the market will do. And during this time, I also put in trades myself, which helps with transparency. And uh, the market scan, basically how I go through it is I start out with the total market cap for all of cryptocurrency to give a general baseline of where we're at. And then I go into the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. So that's just the total altcoin market cap. And then I go to the dominance levels of Bitcoin and altcoins. And then I go through Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then uh, coins listed on Gemini and Coinbase. And I like using those coins because those are USA exchanges, US based exchanges. So I think that gives a little bit more validity to the coins that are listed on those exchanges. And then I go through a lot of the big names, you know, XRP, Link, Dots, and other things that I think are like really, really big and worth going through. And then finally, I'll use the market scanner to see if there's any coins with RSI levels under 30, because that is a good um, indicative indicator of you know, a good buy price basically. And then I will continue just doing the market update from the beginning from just like, you know, as many coins as I could possibly get through. And I do this and then I update the list in the market scan document, which is, this is my old ones, the one from the, uh, a week ago. And I just put in all of the charts that I have. And then I put these into my crypto elite VIP group, which if I, log into my discord um you could see i have my ideal buy zones and then this gives my ideal buy zones right here and then i have my um you know recap video which is you're watching this right now and then i put that into my ideal buy zones and i also you know give that to everyone else uh in the in the free chats uh group as well so we're gonna get through this and then i'm gonna give the updates this is uh the recording i'm doing right now and then I'm going to use my Crypto Elite trading cheat sheet. Oh yeah, so basically how I how I do it is I use this uh, trading cheat sheet checklist, which is the trading checklist that I created and it's available for you at CryptoElite.com in the Crypto Elite course. If you choose to get the actual course, you could get this trading cheat sheet checklist and that will enable you to be able to trade yourself and do everything I'm doing um, yourself and then trade on your own terms. So we have this, I'm going to go over this actually in the very beginning before we start, just so we get a good baseline into, you know, the proper way to trade. And then I also have these different, uh, chart patterns. So I have continue, I'm not sure if you can see this, but these are like continuation chart patterns. There's reversal chart patterns right here. There's, um, chart patterns that are just like basically bullish, bearish, whatever. And then we also have candlestick analysis patterns. So I go through all these, it's really good, especially if you're trying to, you know, if you're honing on a craft or if you're professional or if you're trying to be the best, that's something that you continually reiterate and um, remind yourself of how things are done. So I go through these as well. And I guess we could start off with this trading cheat sheet checklist. Uh, pretty sure I could take myself off the screen and throw this up or maybe I'll just do that later. I don't know, but uh, let's go through this and then I'll, I'll get to the actual charts. So the first thing that you should know is that there's general principles that you should have when trading, or at least this is all what I have. And I, obviously the disclaimer here, I'm not a professional, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything is just my opinion. And all of this is all just I suppose for educational and a little bit of entertainment purposes only, um, you have to do your own research. You have to do your own trades. I'm not responsible for any, you know, any of your trades. I'm just saying like, this is what I'm doing. And like, I've done this for a while and I'm not too bad at it, but, uh, obviously I'm not responsible for anything. This is a, I'm not a professional like that. So with that out of the way, <laughs> I think we get onto the general principles, which I've learned from professionals and from books and from courses and seminars and all this other stuff. So um, I think this is pretty good. So basically what you wanna know, or at least what I, what I know and what I do is that in a bull market, you wanna buy early and you wanna ride the wave. You don't wanna like, 
short in bull markets. You want to buy early and you want to ride the wave or you want to buy the dips. In bear markets, you, you want to either stay out or you want to go short. Or you want to have conservative profit targets for your bit for your longer or for your long trades, you know, for your buys. You want to have conservative profit targets. In bull markets, you could have bigger, you know, wider um, profit targets. And number three is that you want to know the sentiment of the market, uh, where the market is, and where we are in the market cycle. So right now, I would say the sentiment of the market is extremely bullish. I'd say we're in the disbelief stage of the market cycle. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not gonna have a pullback. In fact, we might even very well have a pullback. Uh, the next thing is to buy the rumor and sell the news. So basically in crypto markets, prices, they make huge moves based off of rumors. So if you could get in a coin that is really hyped up, that's really, really big. If you could get in a coin that has a lot of announcements that are coming out, um, a lot of big things that they're supposed to be doing, then that's really good to get into those coins early. And if you could do that and then ride the wave up, then you could have really, really great winners. You gotta remember though, that you need to use the market sentiment and the technical analysis, like especially technical analysis, when determining your entries, take profits, stop losses, and everything like that. When fundamental analysis, FA, such as rumors, and TA, technical analysis, such as major support, when they come together, those are great trading opportunities. So when buying the rumor and selling the news, do this with legitimate projects and sell a day or more before the news actually comes out um, and use TA to back up your levels. So, you know, is there a huge event or partnership coming up? Will the coin be forking? Will the coin be rebranding? Is there a new version coming out? You know, there's a lot of different things that could uh, be catalysts for uh, rumors. And you could also use this thing, coinmarketcal.com to see if there's anything going on uh, with your crypto. So if I actually click, we could go to it. And what does it say? ETH 2.0 staking enabled, ETH 2.0 staking enabled. So right now, today, it's the first, and ETH 2.0 came out today. So Ethereum, it, you know, let's see what's happening with Ethereum. It's, uh, it double topped and moved down a little bit, but this is some aggressive buying, so did drop a bit today, but really, really nothing to be honest. Really didn't drop at all. Just a little bit because it got bought up immediately, right? So there's that. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else. Mm. This is, and this is actually something that you could use in your own analysis. This is something that I use, obviously, using it right now in my analysis. So. December 1st, Unitrade V2 launch. We got some Unitrade, we got that. Uh, yeah, doesn't seem to be too many things happening right now. Well, it's almost like this takes, this could take an hour, you know, to go through all of the different, all of the different things that are happening um, within the crypto sphere, basically, because it gives all of the different projects and all of the different things that are happening. So we're not gonna go through all of this, but this definitely is a good thing to do fundamental analysis um, research. So you have CoinMarketCal. Now, how do you actually do the trades? You know, how do you put the trades on? Well, you wanna do something called top-down analysis. So you wanna start with the monthly, if that's available, then move down to the weekly, then move to the daily, then the four hour, and then you want to fine tune your lines, excuse me, as you shorten the time period. So what this does is it lets you create your longer term zones with the monthly and the weekly, and then you can get your intraday zones as well to connect more until you get to your long term targets. So what you want to do is you want to draw the support and resistance levels using the horizontal line tool uh, to mark off the key support and resistance points. Monthly resistance is a key level. You could also use pivot point standard uh, set to Fibonacci. That's that's another thing. I don't. I just don't do that. I because my trading is pretty good using doing this right here. What I do, drawing some more resistance levels, um, and then the top resistance. That's the barrier. You know that'll make it or break it. Climb your climb to all new highs. 
is it closer to the support or is it closer to resistance? You know, at the support, you don't want to sell. At the resistance, you don't want to buy. Closer to support equals better buy. Bounce off support equals better buy. Broke support equals better shorting opportunity. Close Closer to the resistance equals not that good of a buy. Bounce off of the resistance, not a good buying opportunity. Um, possibly a better shorting opportunity if it bounces off of resistance. And if it breaks through the resistance, possibly a great buy, a uh, great buying opportunity if it's a breakout play. Although that absolutely crushes you in bear markets. So then you want to draw the trend lines and counter trend lines. Um, you could and you should use the EMAs to get a more objective view of the trend. When the price is above the uh, exponential moving averages, that's an uptrend. When the price is below the EMAs, that's in a downtrend. If it's really choppy and no trend is available, uh, lower highs and lower lows, downtrend, higher highs and higher highs, higher lows and higher highs is uptrend. So you want to know is the overall trend upward or is the overall trend bullish? That's very, very important. Dude, what's the overall trend? Is it a bullish market or is it a bearish market? You know, uptrend, you want a long downtrend. It's riskier to long and it's uh, better to short in a downtrend. Then you want to use the Fibonacci, or at least then I use the Fibonacci tool on the monthly and the weekly for long term targets. And if the Fib levels are being met, the extensions are very likely to be met as well. So then you want to use it on the daily for the shorter term targets. If there's major support on the 61.8, then the 61.8 is a great place to long. Likewise, if there's major resistance on the 61.8, then 61.8 is a great place to take profit. And if you can make the Fibonacci make sense on the weekly or monthly chart and have it line up with the support and resistance levels, then there are great indicators for future price predictions. So you want your Fib levels uh, to line up with support and resistance levels. And if they don't, then you could wait until you get another opportunity or, you know, for a better entry. You could combine the Fibonacci with Elliott Waves for even more confluence. So the Fib rules with Elliott Wave Theory is that you combine them and you draw the Fib from the first wave, you know, from the first wave up. If the first fib drops low to the 61.8 or the 78.6, the second wave up, wave three, will most likely retrace less to the 38.2 or 50%. And you could take the fib from the first to the second wave up, but not on the third wave up, wave five. When the third wave up, which is wave five, completes, then you take the fib for the entire five-way count and aim to get in at the 61.8. Then you want to use your rectangular tool to draw out your expected zones, send the rectangles to the back to have a clean chart, and then use the candlestick psychology to see if the market is telling you if the trade is good. You could use the RSI. If it's above 70, it could be a good time to short or, you know, sell. And if the RSI is under 30, it could be a great buying opportunity because it's oversold. So you're getting it at a discount if it's on the RSI is under 30. Um, if you see a bullish or bearish divergence, then check the other time frames, and it could be a good time to long or short. You could also use the MACD, which is uh, also what you should check for divergences with for the in the histogram and the price. Uh, the best time is when the histogram starts ticking up when below the center line. Trade in the direction of the slope of the histogram. For MACD H uh, divergences, the histogram must move across its center line before coming back down for bullish divergence or going back up for a bearish divergence and stopping shy of the first wave. If there's no crossover, there is no divergence. That is on the MACD. Uh, also, the buy signal for the MACD H divergence happens as soon as the first candle of the histogram ticks up from the second bottom or down from the second top. MACD H divergences are very powerful indicators. And if there's a triple bottom or triple top, the third wave needs to be more shallow than the first, but not necessarily the second. MACD falls below the signal line, histogram going down equals bear trend. And if the MACD crosses on top of the signal line or the histogram is ticking up, then that is a bull trend. Um, I might have said bull trend uh, if it's if it's going down, but you could see I, I, I meant uh, if the MACD falls below the signal line, then it's a bear trend. If the MACD crosses on top of the signal line, then it's a bull trend. So if there's an M on the histogram, then you short it. You don't buy it. Price will likely fall. If there's a W on the histogram, then you buy it. You don't want to short it because price will likely y rise. You could also use the moving averages to see if they agree with your analysis. And also, if the price is about to break the 200-day moving averages, uh, that's the sign that we're about to fall into a pretty long-term downtrend bear market. 
you could check the stochastic. Uh, don't buy if the stochastic is overbought and don't sell if the stochastic is oversold. This filters out most bad trades. Narrow and shallow pivots are good signals. Wide and deep pivots are not good signals. And then finally, you have the directional movement. Trade long when the positive directional line is above the negative one. Trade short when the negative directional line is above the positive one. Trade when the ADX is rising, showing the dominant group is getting stronger. Uh, and this actually, I don't use the directional movement uh, right now, but maybe I will start using that again. So we could go over that. And basically it says, you know, have everything you need for your trade. Well, that's great. Then you should be able to answer these questions every time. What price range do you want to enter your position? What price range and targets do you want to sell your coin at? Or is a long-term hold where you won't sell anytime soon? Uh, so, you know, you could say, I'll stack my cells in between X and Y, you know, like 0 0.006 and 0 0.007. Or, I'll, or you could say like, I'll sell 10% at target one, 30% at target two, 60% at target three. You know, these are arbitrary numbers that are based off of their technical analysis, right? And then um, another option is, you know, I plan on holding this coin for a long time and I don't plan on selling until there's another parabolic ru uh, bull run or it hits my super, you know, high sell price. And if the trade doesn't go your way, then what price are you willing to let the coin drop to before you sell or buy back? How many percentage points is that, you know? Because that's your stop loss. Utilizing stop losses effectively could save you a lot of money. I mean, just imagine if you bought it at say like 18,000 in 2018, and then you got a stop loss at 15,000. Well, that would be way better than holding it all the way down to, you know, 4,000, 3,000, where it dropped to. So you want to remember though, that with crypto, there are 20% losses in a day or more than that sometimes. So you got to be really cautious with them. Otherwise, if you've done your research and really believe in the long-term value of a cryptocurrency or a crypto company, then just keep on weighted dollar cost averaging in as the price falls and you'll, you should be good. And since markets are cyclic, you know, truly valuable businesses will most likely rebound again. You know, just think of Amazon after the 90% dip in the year 2000 after the internet bubble popped. You know, Amazon was a truly valuable company and that's why it went up like incredible. Uh, so just some more tips. Don't buy at resistance levels unless an inverse head and shoulders is present. Then, um, and then you should just set a tight stop loss. Number two is make your orders a little above the exact levels you look at so that you get in in case it misses your targets by a little. Also sell a little earlier and uh, a little under your target areas so you ensure you get profits. And also remember, focus on not losing money because if you focus on not losing money and you have good risk management, then the market will help you get money over the long run. Um, and then also buying breakouts through resistance levels is a great strategy during bullish markets, but not during bear markets. Yeah, because a lot of times those are false breakouts. Uh, if the price makes a large move up and then stays in the top 38.2% of that move, especially if it continually hits resistance, that's a bullish sign. Continually delete unnecessary tools and indicators and fine tune the support and resistance levels and draw out any obvious ones if they're not yet plotted as you move down to the lower time frames. Also, you can also make a box from the major lowest point to the highest point and then drag it so that the bottom is at the major is at the next major low. And that could give you another idea of where the price will go to. Along with all of this, you need to make sure that there is enough volume and of course enough price action to warrant a trade. Number seven is trend following indicators like the MACD, EMAs, and directional movement help identify trends. Oscillators help catch turning points. Oscillators measure the speed of surges and show when its momentum is starting to break. They identify emotional extremes of crowds. So oscillators are the RSI, the stochastic, the MACD histogram. Those work great in trading ranges, but may give premature signals in trending markets um, or trending emerging, emerging markets. I'll just say trending markets. If there's a lot of whipsaws within the EMAs, it's better not to trade them as a trend following system. When the ADX is declining, the dominant market group is losing strength and it's better not to trade trend following methods. If using the stochastic while price is in a trading range, always use a protective stop because as soon as the trend begins, you'll get wiped out. If trading in a range, only go with the trend. Divergences are the most powerful signals. Narrow and shallow bottoms on stochastic indicate bears are weak and the rally should be strong. That's if there are narrow, shallow bottoms. Uh, if it's really deep and wide, it shows bears are strong and the likely uh, and the rally is likely to be weak. Only take strong signals. A narrow top 
shows that bulls are weak and a severe decline is likely. A high and wide stochastic top says the bulls are still strong and it's not wise to short. And then finally for uh, taking profits, check major horizontal resistance levels, the 61.8 Fibonacci levels, um, and key fib extension levels. Two, look for psychologically significant numbers like big round numbers, and if they line up with other levels, that adds huge confluence to your take profit zones. And number three is that if overall sentiment is euphoric and the general public are getting in, then you should probably want to scale out. So that is the trading cheat sheet checklist. Now that we have all of that under wraps, we can go back and we can start this market scan for December 1st, 2020. Also, remember that you could uh, you can set your profits, you could set your entries, you could set uh, your entries, your profits, and your stop losses all at once, you know, and have stop loss timeouts, and have automatic trailing stops, and have automatic trailing buys, and have automatic trailing take profits. You could do all of this with three commas. Three commas is the number one platform that I use. I do not recommend trading without it. I use it for every single one of my trades. It saved my trading career and made me a lot of money and saved me a lot of money. So you can literally do so much with three commas. You can even set conditional orders so that your money doesn't get locked up because when you use just straight up Binance or straight up Coinbase and you put your orders in, the money that you put your order into is locked up. So you literally can't use it for anything else. But what if you, you know, what if that one doesn't hit, but then another one that you would have went into hits with three commas, you could put both of them in at the same time and then whichever one hits first is the one that you'll get into. It's just like so much better. Um, so you can put on as many trades as you want with three commas and you can use the link in the VIP discord if you are not a three commas user, uh, uh, user already. And of course, you know, you can get my course at uh, CryptoLeague.com. So uh, two things to keep in mind, if you see the five way golden ratio play out, which is my crypto elite EW fib strategy going extremely heavy. Uh, this I talked about this earlier with the Elliott wave and the Fibonacci and the support levels. Also, if you see a coin coming down to $1, $10, or an incredible, incredibly significant psychological number going heavy and hold, um, this, I remember doing this with um, FYI. So if I type in FYI, oh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, that's what it was. I am dumb. Yes, so this was Wi-Fi, you know, I said, I said at YFI reaching just over 10K, perfect buying opportunity based off of the psychological number, right? So, you know, if you click that, you can see this is the $10,000, $10,000 right, right here and you know, click play and then boom, $10,000. And obviously like it went up, it went up like crazy after, after that because well, it was a big psychological number. This number, this coin is listed on Coinbase and Gemini and in America. So I really like it. Anyway, getting back to this market scan. Uh, last time, oh, well, number three, I mean, number three is that when alts are going up in both USDT and Bitcoin terms, that is when they are the most bullish, um, as opposed to simply just going up in USDT. So overall, last, uh, Two, uh, two weeks ago, I was bullish, but I was cautious. So I was going in with uh, two thirds of my normal position sizes. And you know, it worked out well because we made a lot of good trades and uh, made money and we had risk management. So I'm going to get to the market scan now and we could start this thing. Alrighty guys, well, it is time to get into the update. So let's do this. Bring this, bring this like this. Total market cap, total market cap. This was from November 21st. Total market cap reached 761. And let me, uh, let me put a timer on real quick. I'm just gonna put a timer on for two hours. Okay, so total market cap reached 761B. It fell to 91, from 761 to 91, it's crazy. Came up to 38.2, boom, 38.2 right here, you can see. Uh, fell off, went down to the 61.8 before reversing again. So 61.8 is right here. Uh, went back up, boom, up to the upside. 
drop because COVID, uh, virtually no resistance at the 61.8, which is, uh, inc which is right here. And this is just incredibly bullish. The fact that it just plowed through that. And we had the number one biggest monthly close candle yet ever in Bitcoin's history. So 56%, 56% up in Bitcoin's history right here. This one, 141% up, 107% up. This was during the, this was during the craze, right? The absolute craze. This right here. I mean, this is the biggest one in at least since January 1st, 2018. Yeah, so it looks to be the second biggest after, after this one, it's the second biggest. Still crazy. Uh, however, we, yes, we did bust through there. Very good. Um, but we're at, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it went up so much. So, 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 so much. And what happens when things come up, they usually come back down. So last time I said it was at the monthly resistance. This is when it was like right over here. Uh, I expect a market wide sell off. Uh, eventually, and the total market cap will drop. It does, oh wait, never mind. It does not seem likely in my opinion, but I'm definitely being cautious. Okay, that's what I'm saying. That's what I said. I said that it, there's a probability of a, having a market wide sell off right here at the monthly resistance, uh, but it's not really that likely. So I'm just being cautious and I'm keeping like a third of my account in USDT. Especially looking at the FIB, let's just take uh, uh, this lets me take on opportunities without risking everything and having more to buy on the dips. Plus I still have my dollar cross averaging and hold slash high interest accounts that I never touch in case they keep on going up. So excuse me, we got all that. You really don't want to short. You really don't want to short a slow grind up with consistently overbought RSI and continuation, even after large volume. So overall, uh, cautious. That was my last week analysis. This week, honestly, this week is still, still bullish, still, still pretty bullish. It's like, I don't necessarily want to be because look at where it is, you know, but but it looks bullish. Only, only bearish case, possible bearish case. It's a double top right here, double top. So double top, that's it. However, now we're in the daily, right? Because look, the weekly, look what was going on in the weekly? Nothing, this was the reason, this is the resistance. This. I mean, this was the resistance on the weekly, right? Right, like right around here. And yeah, we had a we had a pullback, so we had the pullback. It happened. It created a doji, and now we're above it again. So technically speaking, this is bullish. It's just that declining volume on an exponential rise up leaves me very cautious. Let's check RSI still moving up on the weekly. Stotch RSI is looking bullish. RSI is looking bullish. MACD, uh, looking bullish. Oof. It's just like, how can you be me? I mean, low, here we go, here we go. This is bearish right here. So check this out. See, this is making me, this is what makes me cautious. Higher high right here. However, lower, lower on the RSI and the MACD uh, is below the zero line. So where will it go? That's the question. Well, if let's say that this is the line right here, then it could potentially go down to 400 and uh, 50 could potentially go down to 450 billion. Uh, 
that would be really bad. I'm not gonna lie, that would be terrible. Twenty percent, twenty percent drop in the market. I, you still got to be cautious. You still got to be cautious when it's like this. Because this is on the daily. If the daily paints a green candle and closes above here, that's a different story. Totally different story. Then it's just like all bulls ahead. So let's uh, bring this back to the... Actually, let's bring this back over here. Um, and I'll, I'll say this, I'll say, maybe I'll do the three days so you could get more on the screen. Um, I'll say, So, possible double top. Oh, I forgot. I need to pause this and then unpause it when I finish writing. Okay. So, pretty much um, what I'm saying is that there's the possible double top on the daily. Overall, I'm still cautious. Uh, taking profits on profitable trades right now, still only trading with two-thirds of my normal position size until the ideal buy zones are hit. Moving on to total number two, which is the crypto market cap. Uh, let's just do this right here. Oops. So what's going on with the total market cap? Well, last time I said Respects the monthly Fibonacci very, very, very well. Shit. It's not good. It's not good, sorry. Um, the 38.2 was respected really well. You can see here, you can see here. Now it's at 61.8. This was respected really, really well last month. So yeah, I expect it to come back down. So let's throw the Fib. And it could come down to 162. Fudge. I would not want to be in alts right now. Yeah, I don't really want to be in alts right now. Okay, so basically I'm really, really cautious with alts right here because it hit the 61.8 and created a double top. And uh, I mean, it could very easily just come back down. Like it'll be weird unless this turns into some type of continuation pattern, but like, it's really choppy right here. I mean, it's sort of forming a continuation pattern, but like still on the, uh, on the daily, it's too, it's too, it's a double top right now. So I'm just gonna go with the double top formation right now and then be super, super, super cautious with alts. And, um, just in case you couldn't see that, let me throw this. Oops, let me put this in the middle right over here like this. And you could see, you know, boom, boom, double top. So I'm going to be really, 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 really cautious with alts and just do this. And I'm going to publish this and be right back. All right. So now we're on to Bitcoin dominance. So Bitcoin dominance, it fell from 97% down to freaking 35%. 
bounced up to 38.2, had a nice little recovery there, and then retraced to 38.2 uh, back in March of 2019, and then uh, started to make its way back up, made its way up to 61.8, and then fell all the way back down, and it's just been having this diagonal monthly resistance, hit it, hit it, it keeps on hitting it. Uh, now it's sort of in this like, uh, will Bitcoin, it's going up and down, you can say, uh, it's like, will its uh, dominance for Bitcoin move up or will it move down? It's no, nobody knows right now because it's in the middle, right? It's not touch. It's not by the line. It's not by the support. I'm guessing, I'm guessing Bitcoin dominance goes down a little bit. So far, this is sort of negative. Like I'm it's thinking it might be a pretty negative month, to be honest. I don't know. 5% back down to this support level like it hasn't busted through here so um basically it retraced 61.8 percent of the short move 38.2 uh, percent from the bottom from the bottom to the top 30.2 so, yep uh now it looks to be on sorry back up to the original 61.8 right here uh there is a diagonal resistance that we'll need to get through though it still has not gotten through this since it's currently getting rejected from the diagonal resistance, that makes me want to go into alts more than Bitcoin, as the gains should be bigger. As Bitcoin dominance falls, Ethereum and altcoins rise. Uh, yeah, so when Bitcoin dominance reaches 53%, 50 down here, that's when I'm gonna put most of my crypto in Bitcoin. When it reaches 70%, then I'll put most of my crypto into alts. So, uh, it's really in between the supports and the resistance level right now. But I guess that's all I can really say is that like in between, oops, I, should, I forgot I'm supposed to. So basically um, it's in between the support and resistance levels. Uh, it was rejected from the diagonal resistance. It'll most likely continue to go down to reach 60 you know, percent, uh, which means that alts will go up in, uh, in the dominance percentage but i'm also expecting a lot of selling uh so there's really like you know there's really no clear signal because i'm expecting selling in the total two in the alt market uh so there's not really any clear signal from the dominance perspective you know like i'm expecting some selling for the total yeah i'm like i'm just expecting selling for like i feel like this is like a I feel like this is just something to trick people and then it's going to go down. Yeah, I'm like really expecting it to go down. I'm, I'm just getting more bearish. Total, total two, uh, BTC, dominance. Uh, yeah, nah. I might actually sell some. Okay, so going back to Bitcoin dominance, basically it's been having this resistance right here, as you can see, just like constantly getting rejected Bitcoin dominance. It had a little fake out right here and then dumped back down. And now it's below this, you know, heavy support resistance level right here. So it's still below it. I'm not really that bullish on it. You know, like I was bullish right here when it broke out. But because um, it broke out of this support level or resistance level, but now it's like it has this that fell below. So I think Bitcoin dominance is going to go down. But you know, I'm just I'm not really that comfortable on alts as well because altcoins are underneath their resistance, their diagonal resistance, and right now it's a doji. So could go either way. We're closer to the resistance, which makes me think that altcoin dominance will go down. But if altcoin dominance goes down, then Bitcoin dominance um, goes up. So that means that altcoins will lose a lot more value than Bitcoin. They'll both go down in market caps. Both market caps will go down. I believe both market caps will go down and Bitcoin, but Bitcoin will go down less than alts. So I think let's just let's just go into actually actually Bitcoin USD. You know, let's go into these actual charts now. Okay, let's um, in case I didn't just say this, I don't know if this was recorded or not, but I said let's just go, you know, let's go to uh, Bitcoin itself and start and start looking at this. And it's like, dude, just look at this. Look at this. Like, 
this is the this is such a huge sell. This is such an obvious this is such an obvious sell. I'm sorry, this is a freaking sell. This freaking sell. Just taking one glance at this. Fuck this, I'm selling all my Bitcoin. Yeah, like, this is such a fucking sell. It's insane. This is ins absolutely insane. Uh, such a, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, pff. no. I uh, no, I'm not going to be an idiot, okay? I'm not going to be an idiot and hold on, hold on to my Bitcoin while, when it looks like that, I mean, shit, dude. 0.36. I think I have like, I don't know. I need to sell a certain amount of Bitcoin. I never want to go beneath a certain amount, right? I always want to have at least a certain amount of, of Bitcoin, right? But like, this is just, this is just like, too too obvious of a of a freaking it's so high look at how high it is it's it meet the all-time highs no there's always a pullback there's oh there's always a pullback always 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 a pullback yeah this this is bullish sure but this is just this is literally just fucking with people right now like sorry excuse my french but this whole right below the all-time highs dump straight up to all-time highs don't like no it this shit has to consolidate oh above 38.2 it has to consolidate within this within this box if it consolidates within this box then i'll be a buyer if not then and preferably within you know well i guess i'll just i'll just put this but yeah it should it should consolidate uh it should consolidate here for me to be a buyer otherwise i i'm going to i'm going to put my buys in at at 14,000 <laughs> yeah I was just checking, uh, checking that for a while. Yeah, look at Bitcoin, huge, big, big sell. It could. Do a double boob. Yeah. 
could totally do that. Uh, this is going down. This went up. Yeah, it's just straight up. <laughs> it's straight. Yeah, no, like this is not. No, hopefully it ranges. Hopefully it ranges here and then alts pump. But all right, <laughs> monthly chart. Come on. Yeah, I mean, looks like it's... I mean, technically I'll, I'll buy half, I'll buy a little bit back in right here. All right, let's look at the weekly because this is obviously monthly is pretty obvious. Like, you want to sell right here? It's pretty obvious. I mean, it's already down. It's already down five percent, but I could easily go down a lot more. So that's the monthly. Is this the weekly? This should be the weekly. Weekly chart. Still at the same price it was at last week. I would not be buying Bitcoin here for trading. We can easily fall back to 14K and still be in an uptrend. Sold a little bit at 14K, sold some more at 15.5, selling a little bit more now at 18.5. We'll buy back Bitcoin once it hits 14K and the dominant slump shines up.
reached the all-time highs and it got rejected. I mean, no. Weekly, weekly is RSI, stocks RSI, super, super high. Uh, weekly, RSI, super, super high. Um, forming a weekly bearish divergence right now. MACD, super, super, super high. Everything's super, super high. Like, on the weekly at least. Not only is it super, super high, but the other things don't look good. Like, yeah, it's just not, it just, just doesn't look good, you know? I'm gonna raise, I'm gonna raise this up. I'll raise it to here. 14th, yeah, this is the, I gotta put, put my buy zone a little bit higher. This is the buy zone. This is the buy zone now. That's the that's the ultimate buy zone. Ultimate buy zone is like 14 1, 13, 13 to 14 1. Yeah. I'll buy in at 16 and 14. Yeah, it's just not I don't know. Technically speaking, I go by technical analysis. That's all I could do. So I'm gonna publish this. Okay, cool. It's got the daily now, so this should be the, so I have BTC monthly, BTC weekly, so Bitfinex, Coinbase, and then I guess BTC, I could use Gemini for the daily. Okay. It's like a double blow off top to me. Lower RSI. Yeah. Lower RSI, high, bearish divergence. Gonna get the double. Gonna get the double here. On the top, these are the two areas. So I'm publish this. Let me also, whoops, add this to my thing. Okay, so for the daily, it's not looking any better. We have bearish divergences right here. We have a blow off double top. We have a parabolic run up. Everything's saying sell. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I just sold, sold my Bitcoin. Let's move on to Ethereum. Start off on the Ethereum USD monthly chart. Previous all time high, all time highs, right. So monthly resistance is right here. I mean, honestly, 722, I really want it to reach 722. If BTC drops, I'm, I have a feeling this will drop as well. This was a huge, huge, huge month. Uh, I don't know if we'll see another huge, huge, huge month. There's just, the hype is just not there and it feels like it's just getting, I don't know, less, it feels like it's getting less prominent at least ethereum ethereum is having a nice steady steady climb up contrast that with this freaking this rally this angle of this rally is just absolutely insane eth's rally um 
East Rally has been pretty, pretty nice. This was a pretty big run up, but it had a really good correction. And then, it, you know, it came back up. However, this sort of is like a, sort of looks like a double top thing to me too. So I'm just not really feeling ETH as well. Uh, but let's do the, what we do. Monthly chart, weekly chart, daily chart, right? So starting on the monthly chart. So yeah, uh, definitely looks like it's like it, it, it was cut short at the 50 instead of the 61.8 or the monthly resistance. Like I would expect either the monthly resistance to have been hit and then it to fall down or to, to 61.8 and then it fall down. But I don't know, it's being sketchy on the monthly. But if we go down, I guess, to the weekly, we could use the weekly chart, right? And um, I'll throw weekly chart onto here, just, I don't know, put it at 40, I guess. And check this out. All right, so first off, hold on a second, let me just copy this. Paste this here. Okay, um, so this is the big picture. So I was very bullish on it last week. Now I'm not as bullish because surged past the 38.2, right? It's like it surged right past it, touched it. But this is looking like from here to here, some sort of like bearish formation, right? Some sort of bearish divergence. Like, why isn't this all the way up here? This should be higher. Like, it's lower. Same thing with this, right? This is... This is lower. Uh, from here to here. From here to here. It's just... It's just lower. And we hit the f 647. Wait a minute. Six forty seven. Apparently, well, this is a monthly fib, you know, and, and even if I take it from here, if I take it from there, it's a thirty eight point two, right? It's lining up, so but oh, actually, from top to the bottom. This is really closer to where it was. I'm not counting that last that last bit just because this lines up so much better. If I had to choose a monthly, this would be the monthly. Yeah, if I had to choose the monthly, this would be the monthly for sure. Yeah, anyway, um, I'm also going to add this right here. So we got the monthly, uh, let's look at the weekly. Another starting to get pretty parabolic on the, the weekly chart. It's looking a little lackluster to me. Hmm. 
Okay, so yeah, for the ETH weekly chart, basically I'm taking some profits on ETH because of this bearish divergence that's forming here and bearish divergence that's forming here. And uh, the fact that it had this really, really big run up. Um, and that's on, well, I'll just keep it on the weekly, right? Let's keep it on the weekly chart. And now we could go and actually create a daily chart. Okay, so for the daily chart, on Ethereum, you could see that there's a clear horizontal, uh, excuse me, clear diagonal support that's going up. There's also this nice support area right here, which correlates very nicely with this support area back here and here and here. So it's just like, this is support, this is resistance. Technically, it's in a no, no trade zone. I should actually, let me zoom out real quick and just do this. Let's put this here, right? And then this is red. Now let me go back into the daily. So yeah, like technically it's in the middle, but like, I mean, I'm leaning more bearish and it, because of this, this bearish looking RSI and uh, bearish MACD and double top formation. And yeah, so this is definitely a uh, sell right here, buy right here. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, of course, though, now that we're not just simply in Bitcoin, we're also in ETH, we need to, or we're in altcoins, although I don't consider ETH an altcoin, it's, we're in territory that is not Bitcoin, basically, uh, we need to compare them to Bitcoin to see the, what would be better off, you know, would you be better off holding your altcoin or would you be better off holding your um, Bitcoin, so looking at it from a monthly perspective so you can't really tell too much from from this chart it's right in between this support and it's right in between the support and this resistance uh, nothing much to go on there so if we go down to the weekly charts you can um, try to determine something else but it's right underneath the minor resistance it's right underneath minor resistance right so here's the minor resistance you could you could tell if i you could tell if i do that um yeah there you go it's basically at the at the resistance it's at oh uh, it's right above it actually it's right above it so it's right above the major resistance. So right above major, right, right above minor resistance, AKA minor support right now. Um, I don't know. Last time I said bounce off the support twice, looking pretty good from here. Got a great bounce from the bullish divergence and it's moving up more bullish than bearish right now. Wouldn't mind. Yeah. Oh, so that was nice. I traded my Bitcoin for Ethereum in November, November 21st and uh, since then, Ethereum has done better than Bitcoin. So, yay for me. Mm, let's look at the daily. Bitcoin versus Ethereum doesn't really look bad. I mean, Ethereum versus Bitcoin really doesn't look that bad, to be honest. But it's just not as... Whoops. Bounce off support twice. Upwards. Now it's forming this. Forming this triangle. I mean, you know, it's like, how do you want to look at it? Do you want, honestly, I would, I would look at this like this. That's how I would look at it. And if you look at it like that, well, really is, really is an either, Either or, you know. I mean, 
That's a bilateral chart pattern. So could go up or down either way, but I would expect it. I'd expect it to move a little bit. Down. So let me let me do this. To be honest, it's in the middle between support and resistance. It, this is a bilateral formation. You don't know. No one knows what this is going to do. It's basically in a no trade zone. I'm not. I'm not going to try to trade this. That's Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Move on. Let's move on to XRP. Should be yeah, XRP. Here's XRP. Um, Killed it. We killed it on XRP last week, actually. So big picture, XRP is one of the, you should know this already. Like if you, well, I mean, I'm not saying you should know this already, but like basically what I, I say, I repeat this every week, but XRP is a long, long, long term hold for me. I'm not planning on selling it. I've just been buying, 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 and um, I'll sell it at major resistances, you know? So let's go to the weekly. It's hard to see this, sort of hard to see this chart, but yeah, it had a fucking phenomenal two weeks, came back down. Now it's at the minor resistance, but uh, I do I do like XRP. Bring this back over here. Honestly, I'm just, I mean, we, we crushed this, right? Because we bought it and then we sold it and then we bought it again, so. Um, Had a major move last month. Uh, currently at resistance. Oof. Ooh, there's actually some good news about XRP. Maybe I could find it. So I found the um, I found the quote. Basically, it said that Joe Biden he. If I bring this up, Joe Biden uh, appointed the crypto and Bitcoin savvy Gary Gensler to head the financial policy transition team. And uh, Gensler stated in 2018 that there's a strong case for Ripple XRP being a security, which is really, really good for Ripple. That might be one of the reasons why it pumped. But regardless, uh, you could see it was just like range bound forever and finally had that big pump. I sold a little bit. Um, for cash and cash it out, but I'm not really gonna sell a whole lot until 89 cents right around here, which is the uh, resistance right here, you know, resistance support, like it's a pretty big resistance and support level. So I'm gonna sell some right here and then, but I'm just gonna buy back more and really not gonna sell a lot until 199 and obviously $3 and 30 cents is gonna be the biggest, <coughs> the biggest sell for me, so. Still, actually gonna, still gonna hold on to this like this. Um, yeah, and I'll just, like nothing really changes with me for XRP. Like it's just such a long-term hold for me. Like it eventually pumps like a madman out of nowhere. So it's gotta be ready for it. So I'm just gonna publish this. At uh, XRP BTC. XRP compared to Bitcoin, compared to the coin, uh, looks to be forming a sort of like a lower trying, you know, was that the same thing? Uh, USD was going higher, Bitcoin is going lower. Mm. One, two, three, four, five. This could be five waves up. Let's say if this is five waves up, maybe the USD has five waves up too. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, let's just, I don't know, do this. And if this is the case, then 43 cents would be the best buy area. So buy actually here and I'll, whoops, put in a, so that would, if that is the case, then this would be the best buy area. Uh, if this is say, I don't know, a double top, and then drops back down to the neckline, drops a little bit below, 
and this would be the yeah this would be it so we got that and then uh for the bitcoin pairing same same difference all right let's um now that we have those we could go on to the gemini and coinbase listed coins so let's go on to um ave So this is Ave. Very annoyed at myself uh, for not jumping into Ave like a madman when I knew that it was gonna pump from here. Like it was so obvious, so obvious. Let me check. Yep. Nope. No Ave. Uh, didn't, didn't long it down here. So I guess I just gotta wait, you know, until it comes back down here. Uh. So. Let me just. Actually, I should probably put in the date, but you know, copy, go back to Ave. All right, so uh, pretty obvious, it's just way too close to resistance uh, to even think about entering. If it falls back down to support, I'll go in heavy. Yeah, same difference, you know, same, same thing. I'm not gonna fucking, like, I'm not gonna go into this at this level. It's just stupid, this is, yeah, it's just stupid. As far as uh, Ave versus Bitcoin, I'm not really concerned. I only want to play Ave versus USD because uh, Ave like altcoins could move up against Bitcoin, but if Bitcoin moves down, then you're you're just accumulating more satoshis that are worth less. You might as well have just waited and just waited in bit waited in USD, and then simply just got got bitcoin just bought bitcoin when it when it dropped instead of wasting time trying to jump in and out of of bitcoin versus uh altcoin pairings you know it's just stupid to do that when you could just go go into usdt not worry about it and uh and just chill so it looks like Ave is gonna go down against bitcoin anyway so Moving on to Algo. Whoops. So Algo USDT. Well, let me um, copy paste, you know, the correct date in here. So I still have it. So I'm still in the trade from the 10th. We'll double down if it f falls further. So this was the monthly. So the weekly, this was the trade, it, wow, terrible. Um, annoying, very annoying that I got in at such a perfect opportunity, such such a perfect time that right here and uh, it jumped up and then just crashed all the way back down. It's really, really annoying. Um, I'm actually gonna get out of this trade because I already have a lot of Algo. I mean, it's not a terrible. It's still a. It's still a okay trade. But. I mean. I don't know. You could either stay in it or you could get out of it. It's. Is this. Is this a good trade? Or not? Like technically speaking, it's above the. It's above the supports. It's above both supports. Ah, uh, I might. Am I super thrilled about it? Not really. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't. Well. Or yeah, it's one of these two things, really. To be honest, it's either close that right here or uh, just wait it out. I'm gonna close it out though. I'm just gonna close it. Well. Tough decision. 
It's a tough decision. It's, cal it's calculated. It's a calculated trade. It's a decent trade. It's calculated. So maybe I'll just leave it open. <laughs> you know what? The yeah, I'll leave it open because I didn't I didn't really put that much on it anyway. So to be honest, uh, Algo does sort of look not bad against Bitcoin right now, um, and not too terrible against USDT either. Um, for Bitcoin, it looks like this is a possible inverse head and shoulders, uh, where this is the neckline and this is the head, obviously, and then shoulder one and then shoulder two, possibly. Um, so, you know, uh, will it come back down? Like, like, yeah, like if it is and it'll do it, like, and it'll come back up here it'll actually go all the way up back up here which would be really really good um otherwise it's just not necessarily yeah that's that's really that's really what i see so um let me just do this okay so yeah this is the trade for algo btc and pretty sure i put that into the Scanner right here. Just double check. Yeah. Okay. So I got that in there. Next up, it's Atom or Cosmos, which I didn't realize just fucking destroyed. It just went on a tear. Went on an absolute tear. Um. Yeah, it's a new one. Cosmos or Atom is definitely a new one that I'm that I'm keeping a, a big eye on for sure. Cause. It just has done tremendously. It's just really, really, really good. So let me just get this in here. Copy. Go to Adam. Oops. Adam. Okay. So this is the monthly chart, right? So bottom to top. What's gonna happen? Sixty one point this is really the area. Um, I would go on a, yeah, I would go in at this level if it reaches the level again. That's what I said. Let's go down to the weekly. Same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, still gonna wait. Still just gonna wait until it reaches until it reaches this major major level right here. In fact, this could, I don't even, I don't even want, even though this is made, this is pretty big weekly support right here. I would still rather wait for this, to be honest, for a second one of these. Of course there is this going on, but just looking at it. Um, I would just say, I mean, the other option is getting in right here Touched, touch, maybe it'll come back down and touch it again. Oof. Tough one. Sort of tough. But I'm gonna have to Let's check, let's check the Bitcoin chart. Oof, Bitcoin chart is looking mighty. Not too bad, not too bad for Adam, to be honest. It looks pretty solid. Fuck, shit, so, all right. Boom, 61.8, I guess, I guess this is gonna be the trade setup. This, it's just difficult to make this trade, you know? This will be the trade set up right here. Uh, touch, touch, if it comes back down, you know, getting it when it touches this line would be the most ideal thing. It's not a terrible, Not terrible. 
<sighs> yeah, I mean, do I have an alert set for this? Edit my alert. Yeah, I mean, this is really it. This is Bitcoin, though. Like I said, versus Bitcoin, it's honestly getting to be not, you know, it's going to be pretty good. So I feel like, at, like, let's just compare Atom to Algo. This is Algo, right? This is Algo. It's Algo. Well, we already know Algo is below the min line. I mean, below the line on uh, versus Bitcoin, right? These ones aren't, though. Um, band. Yeah, band's not. Compared to Bitcoin, like, oof, I don't know. I mean, a lot of these coins are getting, some of these coins are below. This is even below, right? The Bitcoin equivalent, right? So, It's too, I'm gonna need to think about this for a second. I think honestly, I think that just for Adam, gotta wait until Bitcoin, Bitcoin price comes down and touches it and then just throw it in. And honestly, you just put it in there and, and hold it because we've seen it time and time again. If history repeats itself, it should have a significant bounce from that level. You know, I'm, I'm, I'd be willing to put some uh put a put some bitcoin into it at that level it's like a balancer balancer versus us t usdt um so down here they had a liquidity hunt to stop people out below the lows before driving the price higher now it's at a pretty solid place so do I still have um, copy paste? Get the right data in here. Okay, so um, in terms of balancer, I, I honestly I do sort of like balancer. I am in balancer right now. I mean, this was a pretty big support level, right? You know, and then support, 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 resistance, resistance, support, support, or, or excuse me, resistance, resistance, support, 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 lots of support. So I got in, I'm up a little bit. I'm not necessarily the most confident right now in this trade, but I am up 3% or so. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a uh, quarter profits right now. Okay, so yeah, Bal or Balancer, um, honestly, it seems fine to me. It's bouncing off support. I'm just going to keep it. Same thing with uh, Balancer versus Bitcoin. It's at a support. So if it's at support on both USDT and Bitcoin pairings, I'm going to keep it. Um, we also have Band. So let's, uh, let's keep on going. Actually, I'm going to pause it here and then, uh, and then we'll keep on going later. All right, guys, so I left off on Balancer and then I actually went and I went through all of the other coins and ended up putting all of this, all of these coins into the uh, VIP in the ideal buy zones. So I'm just going to go through them now because I already did them. So it's going to be such it's going to be so much shorter than uh, me doing them and pausing and unpausing, uh, at least for this video, if you're even watching this video. But basically, um, I'll just do this, you know, like balancer. I, it's at a pretty decent support for Bitcoin, but I'm playing the USD pair, which is which is right here, right? So the next one we had was band. And, you know, I said, while it doesn't look bad here, um, I would be more comfortable waiting for either $7 to break or for the $4, um, you know, 4.1 support, which is like down, down here, right? So that's basically because like, I mean, look at this big resistance, right? I don't want to 
I don't want to just go straight into this resistance, even though it could totally pop up. I'd rather have it pop up and then, and then get it. In fact, let me, uh, let me do this. Let me just add an alert and say, look for the, um, look for the SR flip, right? So I'll say, look for the SR flip and then I'll add the, whoops, the uh, actual chart to the thing and then it will come up and then I'll be able to do it. So that, yeah, so that's balancer USD and, or I mean band USD and then we have band Bitcoin um, and I wanna wait for the ideal buy zone again. We have basic attention token, basic attention token. Um, here it is. Basically, safest bet is to wait until the ideal buy zone because we are at a resistance right now, right? We have basic attention to token um, versus Bitcoin. It's, uh, you know, it looks really, really bad. Like, look at that um, versus Bitcoin. So I would wait until it hits this again, uh, possibly before going in. It just doesn't really look that good. Then there's comp, it broke out. It, I mean, it broke below the diagonal support right here, and now it's below the diagonal resistance. Um, and it went underneath the horizontal resistance as well right here. And uh, hopefully, hopefully my buy got hit because um, we had this come up after it, after it, you know, came up here, I said, get in on the retest. So hopefully, you know, it hit this retest right here. I'll have to check on that. And after comp, there is um, comp for Bitcoin as well. It's under the resistance. I would rather just uh, make it flip. Like this is a pretty big resistance right here. I don't know why I don't have this plotted out like this, you know, but yeah, I'm not going to get it. Um, CRV versus Tether. I said it bounced off the support really nicely. Um, had the EMA crossover. Curve is really popular. Um, I'm just waiting on the BTC pair to break resistance before jumping in. This is the uh, BTC pair, it's the resistance. So I'm just gonna wait on this. Uh, Civic, Civic uh, from November, buying the 61.8 support, selling, so we bought right here, sold right here, crushed it, but obviously it just went up like nuts. So not really looking for Civic anymore. Um, District X, I'm looking for the same thing, uh, AKA get in right here at the 61.8, get out right here. Uh, that's DNT. Then we got EOS for EOS. You know, I'm not really very enthusiastic about EOS. I wouldn't really put too big of orders in it, but if it does come back down here, I got the alert set. We got fill or file or whatever you want to call it. It's basically in accumulation right now. It cooled off and um, it's just literally, it's like dead. I don't know. It's not really doing anything. Zero volatility. If it comes down here, um, if it comes down here though, then I will buy it. So, um, let me put this in here, getting fill and I'll put the, uh, chart into fill like this. So it'll pop up on the feed. All right. So that's fill, uh, file, file, whatever, F I L same thing for the Bitcoin chart. Uh, Kyber Network, Kyber Network, I might be in Kyber Network or I think I'm actually just waiting for this to come back down and tap this level right here before moving up because this is a pretty major, major support resistance level, you know, uh, you could see right here and then it tapped it up again. So yeah, I'm just waiting for it to come down there. I got my order set. Kyber Network versus Bitcoin. I'm, I would like it to come down here. Uh, we got Chainlink. Chainlink. This one. Okay, so this one's really, really, really big. So Chainlink basically has this minor diagonal support line, and it has this major diagonal support line, and it has this 200 moving average. So if we look at it, 
you would want to get in at this major diagonal support line or this minor diagonal support line. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, same thing with chain link versus Bitcoin. If it hits this super major support trend line, I'm definitely, definitely going to be getting in here. So I have a bunch of alerts set. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, I have a lot of alerts set for link to start scaling in as it comes down to this super support trend line. Uh, loop ring or LRC uh, will grab some if it hits the ideal buy zone because that's uh, right above 0 0.1. So it's a big psychological number. Previous support, 61.8. I like it. So just waiting for it to do that or I'll have to re-analyze um, it. Same thing for the Bitcoin pairing. Bitcoin pairing is at a big support, but it's just, I don't know, a little weak. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy anything based off of Bitcoin right now. I'm gonna buy it based off of USD. You know, that's just that's just what I'm gonna do. Um, Mana, Decentraland, too close to resistance right now to trade. Same thing for same thing for BTC pairing Maker. Uh, Maker, considering it's been in this ping pong zone for over a month, this is the trade that I have that I put on for Maker. I put it down right there. Uh, Bitcoin chart, Bitcoin chart, I'm not going to use, I'm going to use the uh, USDT chart, although it does look like USDT could go down this much and it looks like the Bitcoin chart could go down uh, pretty much as well before turning around. There's NMR, which is a new, a new coin I just found out. Um, I like this area right here, which is the diagonal support and the horizontal, some, some slight horizontal support. So I'm going to have two stacks, one right here and one right here. And that's going to be NMR. I think it looks pretty promising, to be honest. Um, for Bitcoin pairing, for the Bitcoin pairing, it did finally make its first higher high and higher low, unless it dumps more, which I could see it dumping more. So, but it did make its its first higher high, which is good. Uh, regardless, there's OMG. If it hits the moving average, then that's a go. So I have a. I believe I do have a alert for the moving or an alert for the moving average also if it hits the ideal buy zone i'll go in there oxt this is on coinbase it's between the major supports and resistances right now so i'm not not going to get it if it hits the support i got an alert set uh bitcoin doesn't matter ren versus tether look at this huge huge triangle that that it's that it's forming you can see it better on the weekly but yeah look at that crazy right so I'm just waiting for it to come down and hit this triangle or hit the hit the support. I have a, or excuse me, yes, I do. I have an alert. So if it hits this, I will buy it, which is great because it's close to the 200 moving average and this support and the horizontal support. So it's really good buy. Ren is a, Ren is a great buy. And I do believe I, okay, so um, I did put that in there. Then we have REN versus Bitcoin, which, you know, it could come down here to this buy zone. This would be a great buy zone for REN. Really good buy zone for REN. So that's uh, what I'm waiting for for REN. For REP, waiting for the ideal buy zone. You, it's like all of these coins are, are essentially the same. Um, ideal buy zone for, for REP versus Bitcoin. It's at here. This is, this is, this is a difference. This is the one difference uh, is that some of these coins... The USD pairing is between the support and the resistance, right? But their Bitcoin pairing is at the support. So that makes it a little difficult. Like, you know, so you could, it, the, it, it does have more likelihood of it going up uh, uh, for both pairs. But the fact is that there's a lot of coins that broke through this uh, Bitcoin support, you know, the major Bitcoin supports like Algo and other things that broke through the Bitcoin support. So I'm going to play the USD pairing more than the than the Bitcoin pairing. Uh, then we have an, uh, uh, SNX, really, really popular DeFi coin. This is from the resistance. This is the diagonal resistance right here. It's the ideal buy zone. I really want it to come down here. I have my alert set. If it comes down here, I'm definitely, definitely going to pick up a big bag of SNX. I don't really think it's going to pop up through here. It might, but I don't know. I'm just, I would much rather get it at a lower price. Yeah, same thing for the Bitcoin pairing, storage, same thing for this. 
but I'm really just waiting and waiting and waiting. Like that's, I'm being this patient, you know, I have a, I have a few, I have a few, um, trades, right. Uh, but I'm not using all of my, I'm not using all of my capital. Uh, we have uni uni right here. So uni is cool because uni has this nice, uh, area of support, 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 support. So a big support here. So if it comes back down, I'm gonna grab a bag of uni right here and I could just sell it underneath this wick if it, if it drops and I'll look to buy probably down here if it does that, uh, XRP. Oh, I think that's it. No, that can't be it. Um, XRP is forming this. It looks like to be forming a triangle. Ooh, one thing that I forgot to put is that um, we'll have an airdrop soon. Sell imme immediately after the airdrop. I want to sell it immediately after the airdrop because I think a lot of people will do that. They'll get their free coins and then they will sell it. So that's what I'm going to do. We have XTZ or Tezos um, waiting for this um, for this buy zone to get hit one more time. Bitcoin has a little ways down to go as well. The Bitcoin pairing. We have uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, whatever you want to call it. And like, yeah, this got in at 10 K, but sold, I sold it like here. So they're like, you know, 13 or something like that. So not too much to talk about, but damn, if it, if this thing comes down to 10 K, you know, I'm getting in cause this is like so, so big. Um, but all I can really do is just wait. I'm going to try to get in at 20 K. If it comes down to 20 K, I'm going to get in and for my law, I'm just going to hold it. And then if it goes down to 10, you know, I'm going to get a lot more, but just like, damn, I uh, should have just bought a lot more and should have held it. And same thing for a Bitcoin version, you know, it's tapping, double tapping this resistance. This might be a double top or this might be a consolidation before breaking through, right? It might break right through it, but I have the same thing going on here for the Bitcoin pairing. This is a minor support. This is major support. So if it reaches either of these things, I'll be going in heavy. Uh, Zcash, Zcash is at this, uh, resistance level right here. You know, it's been just like in this channel, this downward channel forever. It's like, I'm not going to get it until it breaks this channel. Pretty much. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, we got zero X, zero X like, I like it. I'm bullish on zero X, but, um, I'm just going to wait until it hits this minor support or the ideal buy zone. Not really looking to get anything. Got a zero X versus Bitcoin could see a little bit further down. If it reaches here, got this, you know, I got this in the uh, VIP. So it'll go off. You'll get alarms, get the uh, alert set. We got amp. I like uh, amp is pretty cool, but it just looking at this, looking at amp right now, you know, you don't want to get, you don't want to get this. Look at it. Uh, you want to get it when it's, uh, when it comes back down there or if it comes back down there. And after that, that's that's all of them so we got we just got through all of the gemini and coinbase listed coins and that took me that must have taken me 20 that took me such a long time to do it's actually sort of insane how long that took uh that that took to do and it's not even that's not even going through some of the coins that i really like some other coins i really like like dot um or QNT or EWT. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a video on, or at least an update, I guess I'll make a video on the trades that I am currently in right now. I think the current trades that I'm in right now, I post only to the VIP group. Uh, this, this market scan that shows you the levels and what I'm looking at and my overall view of the market that gets posted to, you know, every, everywhere. But um, yeah, only only people in the VIP could see like exactly what coins I'm in and like where I got in and what I'm doing and, and how I manage my trades and stuff. Otherwise, it would just be too like hectic. Um, but regardless, that is the game plan. Um, 
And this literally took me 20 hours. So if you are watching this right now, please hit that thumbs up, smash that thumbs up button, smash that like button to oblivion because it helps. And um, yeah, if you liked it, think it's good, leave a comment, do something. Send me a message on Instagram, on Twitter, or uh, sign up to the VIP or grab the course, whatever you want. I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.